So when I'm looking for quarterback improvement, one thing I do is look at matchup, yes, but another thing I do is is try to find guys who are getting weapons back and which will clearly lead to some quarterback improvement. And there's two guys who fit the mold for me, and I'm going to talk about them right now. First one is Philip Rivers. Obviously, this isn't too under the radar. He was the top quarterback in week four and was the one who was going to win you the millionaire maker or well i think bortles actually won the millionaire maker but he was he's a guy that could win you a big tournament like fandle sunday million the millionaire maker that being said i i don't hear him talk being talked about that much this week with tom brady playing and some matt ryan against the redskins but rivers is getting back a key component of his offense this week and antonio gates a guy who had 12 touchdowns um, in 2014, this is this guy is someone that Rivers is going to need to perform very well, and he's only 6,200 going up against the Steelers defense, who wasn't good against the pass last year, and it's not a good against the pass this year. I think Rivers is a really fantastic play, and then I look at that price tag, 6,200. I think is just way too cheap for a quarterback of this caliber getting a really good receiver back in Antonio Gates. Um, so Rivers is one. Then another one, and you might scoff at this, but hear me out, okay, is Michael Vick. And here's my reasoning. So first of all, Martavis Bryant is coming back from a four-game suspension, which is going to help Vick a little bit. Bryant is a really good receiver, a great deep threat. He's a guy that could get Vick a quick touchdown, and Vick does throw a decent deep ball. But one thing I want to mention is is Vic, obviously, we've seen him before, and we saw him in week four against the Ravens, and he did not look good. But one of the reasons he didn't look good is the Pittsburgh offense just did not let him do much. There were a lot of short passes, a lot of three-step drops, and I think the reason was is it was a Thursday night game, and he just wasn't that familiar with the offense, and the, the coaches wanted to limit him a little more. Now he has nine days to prepare for San Diego, who probably is a middle-of-the-road defense. It seems like they allow a lot more yards on the ground than they do in the air, but they're not a very good defense either way. And with nine days for, to prepare, Martavis Bryant coming back, the Steelers' offense is really, really good, and Vic is only 5,100. He could do some damage, and we know he can do some damage with his legs as well, nine rushes for 33 yards. I think we're completely overlooking Vic here. And I think he could have a very, very good game, especially in that offense where he can check down to Le'Veon Bell, he can throw to Antonio Brown, let him do his thing, he can throw a deep ball to Martavis Bryant. He can do a lot of things that are quite easy to rack up the numbers. So I think Vic is really, really under the radar this week, and he's actually my top pick on Daily Fantasy winners. Um, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty confident in this one. So those are two sleepers that I really like. And uh, thanks for listening.